Well, the aim of this talk is to highlight tips and tricks of open reduction and internal fixation of the calcaneus and to show the disabilities resulting from the neglect of treatment and the management of neglected cases and sickly of fractures of the oscalsis. The calcaneus, if you look at it from the, the, um, above, you'll find four articular surfaces, the posterior articular surface, then the middle for the head of the talus, and then two anterior, and this is for the head again, and this is for the cuboid. This part of the calcaneus, the sustentacular tali, is cortical bone, hard bone. The rest of the calcaneus is a mass of cancellous bone and a thin cortex. Uh, as a result of the force of the impact, a longitudinal fracture line runs from in front and back like this, splitting uh, the calcaneus into a medial part and the lateral part uh, between the hard and the soft bone. And then this articular surface is depressed into the body of the calcaneus and this produces some sort of bursting uh, of the calcaneus resulting in multiple fractures. This is a fracture line in the sustentaculum, uh, in the, I'm sorry, in the, uh, in the sinus tarsi and this is another fracture line separating the tuberosity from the rest of the calcaneus. The lateral wall also bulges out and the medial wall also may bulge in. The lateral view can show the depressed articular surface here and there. Uh, anteroposterior view can show a fracture line running from anterolateral to posteromedial, to posteromedial here in the axial. And even the oblique view, uh, those who don't have a CT, an oblique view will show the sustentaculum tli here and the fracture line from running from anterolateral to posteromedial. Uh, the CT, the best, the best view to show is to, uh, through the oblique coronal in this direction uh, uh, where it shows the different fragments of the calcaneus, the displacements, and you help you to put a plan how to reduce this fracture and fix it. Classifications, two commonly used classification, the AO classification, extra articular, type A. Uh, type B is articular undisplaced. Uh, and then the C, which is the worst, the articular displaced multifragmentary fracture. So, Saunders classification is also in common use. Type 1 undisplaced, type 2, 3, 4 are articular fractures uh, with 2, 3, and 4 fragments uh, consecutively. To conserve or to operate, there is a large amount of papers in the literature. Uh, the most important two key pa papers are by Buckley et al. In the first one is in the Journal of Management Surgery, American 2002. And this is a multi-center study uh, uh, showing evidence-based medicine. And uh, the second one is by the same author uh, published in the American uh, Academy of Orthopedic G Surgery Journal in 2004, and this is a review article. In these two articles, he has, they, the authors have put uh, the non-surgical versus the surgery. The non-surgical management uh, is better kept for the old sedentary patients who suffer from chronic diseases like diabetes, peripheral vascular diseases, and uh, with minimally displaced fractures. These might be treated successfully with a non-surgical means. Surgery is kept for the young patient, for the non-smokers, uh, good outcomes with a low rate of complications. The advantage of surgery actually is in early return to work. The pain disappearance is almost the same in the non-surgical and surgical and both of them lead to a more or less a stiff subtalar joint. However, the advantage of surgery is early return to work. Th uh, there is a tendency to do a primary subtalar fusion 
this, this author, actually in 1992, has published six cases of primary subtalar fusion for, for Sonder 3, for, Sonder 4, I'm sorry, Sonder 4 type of fracture. Uh, uh, he claimed that uh, this saves the disability time and restores the length and, uh, of the gast gastrocnemius filius complex and corrects the flat foot and relieves the uh, narrow peroneal space. Uh, I doubt if, uh, w whether this is possible because to do a primary arthrodesis of a mass of, actually it is a bag of multifragments, uh, and how can you then arthrodesis them pro in, a, in a proper shape? You can't restore the shape of the calcaneus. You just can excise the articular surface, that's true, but you will get a deformed calcaneus and this has got drawbacks as uh, we are going to see later. The goal of open reduction antenna fixation is to restore the height, length, and width of the calcaneus. That's to restore back the calcaneus to its normal shape, and this is important. To restore the uh, subtalar and calcaneal cuboid joints being articular fractures, and to secure stable antenna fixation to allow early mobilization, early movement. Surgery, it is a high energy uh, injury, usually due to fall from a height or road tra traffic accidents. The skin is often bruised, edematous, and the seat of blisters. And uh, either to operate immediately after the subsidence or after the subsidence of the swelling, usually after f uh, one week or 10 days. The position used for surgery is the lateral approach, uh, lateral position. And if the case is bilateral, then the patient is prone with external rotation of the, of the legs. The skin incision is L-shaped. The vertical line should be as uh, close to the, to the tendo Achilles as possible to avoid injury to the sural nerve. And the transverse line, you have to palpate the, the bone here, and then you go with your incision uh, along that line uh, and extending beyond the, the calcaneal cuboid joint so that to inspect and deal with this joint. Then you have to erase the skin of subcutaneous tissues together with the periosteum if, 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 if possible. Uh, the, the, tail, the, the calcaneal fibular ligament has also to be raised to be able to reach the subtalar joint. And then the, this is a case, a, a man aged 35 year, uh, years who fell from a height of about three meters and sustained this bad type of fracture with depression, you can see depression of the subtalar joint articular surface here. This is uh, the CT showing comminution of the calcaneus. This is during surgery, the L-shaped incision again here exposing the outer surface of the calcaneus, and you can see the bulge, lateral bulge here. This is the articular surface of the body of the talus here. And then we really have to reflect the lateral wall down to see the articular fragment depressed here, and we see also here the sustentacular fragment. This fragment is usually minimally displaced. We have to correct its position, and also we have to uh, to deal with the length of the calcaneus. To restore the length of the calcaneus, we usually put here a Steinman pin and keep pulling on that pin to pull on the calcaneus and through ligamentotaxis we get alignment of the calcaneus and the restoration of its length. If the calcaneus is badly comminuted and the Steinman pin does not hold, then we apply a wire around the tendo Achilles as shown in this picture here. After that, the depressed fragment has to be elevated separated from the depression and elevated to its position, and then uh, the lateral rule is returned and a uh, K wire is put in the, that uh, depressed fragment which was depressed, now restored to its position, and then uh, plate and screws are to be put to, after, to, to fix the different fragments of the calcaneus, the anterior segment, the posterior segment, and so on. This is uh, showing uh, two leg screws through the, the, uh, the, the previously depressed fragment and the construction plate put to fix the fracture. 
uh, uh, this is a boy aged nine years, he also fell from a height and with great uh, displacement of the articular surface, again open reduction and internal fixation was done, the internal fixation is was done by these two K-wires and one leg screw. The post-operative care is closure with a suction drain, crepe bandage, uh, posterior splint and elevation for one week, start movement of the joint uh, early, weight bearing in four to six weeks. Another case here, showing again the fractures and comminution, treated again by a reconstruction plate. In this patient, he had two plates. You can use many types of plates, actually. The implants are 3.5 or 2.7 screws. Small reconstruction plate uh, might be used. Edge plate, well, now recently they have introduced the calcaneal locked plate. Uh, being locked, it is of advantage in this uh, comminuted fracture. Uh, the results of open reduction and internal fixation usually the subterra joint is partially stiff. The patient is able, however, to walk on uneven ground and climb a ladder and even uh, to go on scaffolds and work as, as act back or work back as a builder. Second refusion is much simpler if the hind foot is already well aligned rather than primary fusion. Now we come to another part of my lecture, the second part of my lecture, that's the neglected or conservatively treated fractures of oscalsis, and these are rather common uh, in my country, uh, though the, the uh, very few uh, papers are present in the literature about this subject. Pathoanatomy, subtalar incongruity, as you can see here, uh, greatly deformed calcaneus, and the articular surface is completely incongruent, there is loss of height of the oscalsis, it becomes also broad side to side, and it is also short, and this is important. It is short. Uh, various hind foot, flattening of the lugubinal arch of the foot, and slackening of the gastrocnemius soleus, smashed heel pad of fat. The talus is more horizontal, leading to impingement at that site, it's more horizontal. Uh, in neglected fractures, clinically, there's pain of the subtalar joint, pain below the lateral malleolus, pain at the front of the ankle due to impingement between the neck of the talus and the tibia, pain at the uh, uh, heel pad of fat, tarsal tunnel syndrome might develop from the medial cortex bulging medial, limping and loss of the springy foot motion, and shortening of the leg, and also shortening of the foot. And this is quite troublesome to the patient because he complains of the shoe slipping off his uh, foot as he goes. The heel pad of fat, fat compartments with fibrous partitions between the periosteum and the deep fascia here. Uh, this structure is very important for weight bearing. Unfortunately, this becomes damaged, as you can see it uh, here. This is hematoma between the fractured bone and the heel pad, and it ends in scar tissue, which is painful on weight bearing. For neglected cases, careful localization of the site of pain is necessary to deal with its cause. So there, uh, the surgery of either shaving of the wool bulge of, or in situ fusion or distraction arthrodesis. If there's perineal impingement with pain below the lateral malleolus due to perineal impingement, uh, with limited shaving of the lateral wall bulge of the calcaneus will give a reasonable result. If there is subtalar arthritis due to incongruity without major deformation of the calcaneus, pain is on the size of the subtalar joint from subtalar arthritis, and the treatment of this condition is subtalar fusion in situ. If, and this is an example of subtalar uh, fusion in situ, the calcaneus is not much deformed. Here we put a, a screw from below up and one from above down. In such cases with severe deformation of the oscalsis, then we have, you, you see here, they, well, he was treated before by open reduction antenna fixation, but he has got pain due to arthritis. So this structure after this was made, as you see here, resulted, this is after the, 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 the distraction after this, you can see the angle between the talus and calcaneus is restored back, and this is the bone graft. Uh, tricortical bone graft is being put here. 
the structure also restores the normal plantar ward inclination of the talus and lowers the posterior tuberosity, uh, relieving the peroneal impingement, stretching the tendo Achilles, and lengthening the leg. However, the smashed heel pad pain remains. Thank you very much for your attention.